Hey friends, I'm Pragmatic, and two years ago I started a small series where I cover either a video game or a video game topic for the entire month of July. We did Onimusha the first time, which we dubbed Oni Month, and I thought this time, why not continue that series with the rest of the games that I missed the first time around? Why not start with Onimusha Blade Warriors? It's a, uh, you know, kind of sucks. Let's go! I've always kept that common belief that if a game does well enough, and is popular enough, a spin-off of some kind or some kind of side game is soon to follow. Onimusha rings true with that belief, as it got a few of them, one of the oddest of the bunch being Onimusha Blade Warriors. Releasing a year later after Onimusha 2, and a few months later for other regions, would see this hitting in the States in 2004. Ah, 2004. My freshman year of high school. Life was awkward back then. Kind of like Onimusha Blade Warriors. The setting takes place just a few months after Onimusha 2, and 11 years before Onimusha 3. Our former protagonists are once again brought into conflict with the return of Nobunaga. Now you can choose from the heroes of Onimusha 1 and 2, or the villains, as well as some newcomers. And how do all these stories intertwine in this fighting free-for-all? Well, they don't. Because in terms of an actual plot, there isn't any. Yes, while Onimusha Blade Warriors seems to lean into the mixed-together story involving warriors and villains alike, nothing really ever happens. Choosing Jubei for story mode gives the impression that he's seeking out Samonosuke to find out why he possesses the power of the Oni, possibly leading to a misunderstanding and potential conflict, followed by an understanding of a common enemy, but it doesn't. And I have no idea why. That's not exactly true, they do meet at the end of the game, but there's not really much to show or imply that they ever fought or met or really anything. And that's what I would have told you if I didn't look up that this game has to be played multiple times with the same characters to actually get the plot. So yes, there actually is a plot, but this game has to grab your attention hopefully long enough for you to unlock the cutscenes that give you some more of the plot, and here's why that's kind of a problem. I wouldn't normally hold this side story fighting game not having any plot with any heavy judgement, if it didn't try to make itself somewhat canon. If you watched my Onomusha 3 Demon Siege video, you might remember me going on about how great the opening was, but then letting you know that this big guy known as Gargant shows up and fights Samonosuke for two minutes, and that he had never appeared in a previous numbered game, because he debuted in Onomusha Blade Warriors. You think Kingdom Hearts was the first series to put plot points in their spin-offs? No way. But the problem here is that you want to put this big fight scene in this intro to grip the player into this story. The villain here should have some kind of importance. But no, despite having a debut in a side game, Gargant has no more importance than what he had in Onimusha 3. No big secret reveal, no backstory, not even any really big cutscenes. Which is a big missed opportunity, because this is the character that canonically, eventually, kills Kaede, Samonosuke's companion since the first game. That is something totally plot-worthy, even more so for a numbered title. But feeling I've touched on this major miss enough, let's talk about the gameplay! Now, Onimusha Blade Warriors could be written off as your typical Smash Brothers clone, but I do feel it has a little bit more going on. While the overall format does feel similar to Smash Brothers, a lot of Onimusha's core gameplay mechanics are prevalent, which I like. Attacking with your weapons mirrors how you would use them in the mainline game, but in a more side-scrolly way. And where Smash Brothers focuses more on platforms, Blade Warriors has three layers of background and foreground you can fight on. This gives you a good chance to distance yourself from a player to maybe score some of the many unique items or abilities the levels contain. The items you can use are very similar to the ones you would find in Smash Brothers, and even kind of break away from the idea that you're in feudal Japan when you're suddenly pulling out some space age weaponry to use on your foe. I actually kind of like this because it doesn't make the game look too serious when it absolutely doesn't need to. Among the items are also some elemental abilities. Absorbing them and hitting R1 and triangle will allow you to use whatever elements you absorb, which can give you a big advantage, and anyone can do it, not just Samonosuke or Jubei and the way the elemental attacks perform differ subtly from one character to the next, which gives each character their own unique feel, but beyond the items and mild variation of moves from all the characters, there isn't really any expansive moveset for any one character. Versus mode and story mode share some similarities in terms of winning conditions, 
You can play a life bar mode, which is exactly how it sounds, facing each other until one or the other runs out of health, or a soul mode, where each time you defeat your opponent, they'll drop a soul. If you can absorb enough of them, you'll win the match. And this is pretty much the same for story mode, with some levels needing you to kill a certain amount of enemies, and sometimes you have to collect enough souls, throwing in a mid-boss battle here and there, and with every regular soul collected after each stage can be used to level up your character and make them stronger. I love that they included some of the bosses from Onimusha 1 and 2. Even though they aren't playable, it's still a joy to see them in this game. Stop right there, pest! So you've been sniffing around for us demons, huh? Well, how about I gobble you up right now? The conclusion depends on your character, with you either fighting Samonosuke or Jubei, or both, as an evil character and choosing a good character has you up against Nobunaga, which stands as one of the most ridiculous fights I've ever taken part in. Fighting games are notorious for having insane final bosses, and Onomusha Blade Warriors is no exception. While the Samonosuke and Jubei fights can be rough, the entirety of the Nobunaga fight is completely in his favor, with his long reach, stage hazards that only affect you, and his ability to absorb souls is way faster than yours, though you can get into these little soul tug-of-war battles which aren't hard to win. Come on, just, just give me, give, come on. Argh! The biggest strategy I found to defeat him is to try and hang back and bait him into coming to you. Then wait for this guy to show up and run into the health draining pool. He'll usually just drop an elemental soul, but despite this, it can take a while to beat him. And I played on normal. No, a waste of my time. And what's the reward for all this? Not much. The ending is mostly the same for everyone, and this calls back to the fact that if you want any type of understandable plot, you have to beat the story mode multiple times for certain characters, which gives nearly no reason to do it. Well, that's not totally fair to say, because beating the game with certain characters and leveling up characters to a certain point can unlock other characters, and what Capcom game in the 2000s isn't complete without being able to unlock some form of Mega Man. Mega Man EXE joins the fray to once again distance yourself from the idea that this game should ever be canon. With a large variety of characters to choose from, I have to say my favorite was definitely Grunt. I have to do it! Grunt was definitely the guy that just signed up for the war and gets thrown into the world of Onimusha's conflict, and somehow gets through it. I love despite how shaky-legged and squeaky-voiced he is, he still manages to take down the powerful foes like the first boss from Onimusha, For a fighting game, Onimusha Blade Warriors boasts a lot of replayability. With tons of characters to play through the story, weapons to unlock and buy from the Demon Realm Man from the first game with the victory orbs that you can absorb, and even getting the chance to go to the Demon Realm itself for more unlockables, for the low price this game is, it could definitely be worth your money and time spent playing it, especially since the game wants you to beat it over and over again. I do have to take a step back and admire the detail the developers put into the stages. Not taking the easy route and just making whatever stages they wanted, but actually taking moments from Onimusha games and painting them into playable stages, like the roof of Gifu Castle from Onimusha 1, or the mining town from Onimusha 2. The music is actually pretty good, with composition primarily being performed by Sinichiro Sato and quite a few other notable names. But something that does bug me is that despite this game being developed close to the time that Onimusha 2 was, the voice actors for Onimusha 2 were not recast to their characters in Blade Warriors. Jubei has a much deeper voice that I actually kind of like a little bit better. But Eke switches to this southern plantain owner and I just do not like it. You are the Jubei Egu who is master of the blade! It must be fate that three proud warriors meet in such a town. Just when I think this place is demon-proof, you scum start with your tricks! Take a good sticking with my spear to remember me by! Onimusha Blade Warriors as a whole is pretty fun. Separating itself well from the typical Smash Brothers clone, playing with two players is already pretty fun, but adding two more with a multi-tap I imagine would be even better. With unlockables, a difficult final boss, and multiplayer ability, Onimusha Blade Warriors deserves a bit of praise, but with all the games stacked together, this one would probably be at the very bottom. Still, I do encourage checking it out if you're planning any get-togethers. Thanks for watching!
Hey guys, thanks for checking out my first video of Oni Month. I hope to get out the next videos very soon. If you liked what you've seen, consider dropping a like and subscribing if you're new. As always, keep it practical and have a great day.